The two feminine traits of women that every man routinely fall in love. Regardless of the woman's age, country, or religious system, men are frequently drawn to two different qualities in women. This is surprisingly true everywhere in the world, and in this video, you'll find out what these two characteristics are. When men fall in love with a woman, she always demonstrates two characteristics, whether consciously or subconsciously, and unexpectedly, it operates like a clock, it works as consistently as the law of gravity. A part of you may be thinking, surely this doesn't work for everyone. There must be some exceptions. As it turns out, not at all. What makes a man fall in love with a woman? Let's start with the obvious. You simply cannot convince a man to fall in love with you logically, nor can you do it by overproving yourself as a desirable woman. Falling in love is a psychological and emotional process. Of course, when everything works out, it's a lovely process. Falling in love is a complex process that is based on several subtle nuances and emotional triggers. That is how he feels. It all comes down to how you make him feel. But here's the main issue. You will never be able to force another person's emotional decisions. At best, you may influence it. The only true power you will ever have is on how you present yourself. There is so much that you and I cannot control in this life that we would be fools to attempt. What we can do is focus our energy and attention on what we have control over. When God wants it to happen and the timing is perfect, everything works out. Sometimes we come up empty-handed. That's okay. It's all part of life. You would never appreciate love, pleasure, and passion if you had never experienced heartbreak. You will place yourself in the best possible position to attract love if you understand these two characteristics that men love. And remember, love always manifests itself in unexpected ways. Here's why these two characteristics work like magic. These two characteristics work so effectively at causing men to fall in love because they are founded on evolutionary biology. In other words, over hundreds of thousands of years, we as a species relied on this emotional process to help us survive. It's in our blood. Don't just take my word for it, get out there and put it to the test. I want you to see how this works for you firsthand. To fall in love with any woman, a guy must see her showing these two characteristics on a subconscious level. Because, in reality, he has no conscious control over who he falls in love with or if he falls in love at all. Right? We are all aware that we do not pick who we fall in love with, it simply happens. This is because everything operates at a level much beyond conscious thinking. It's actually a cascade of biological and physiological processes within him that allows him to experience the emotional bliss that men experience when they fall in love. But there's a catch, you as the woman must demonstrate both of these characteristics in order for a guy to go through the emotional and biological experience of falling in love. This is critical, so pay attention. Don't make the mistake of believing that one of these characteristics is more vital than the other, they are both equally important. Why being attractive is not one of these two traits. So before I tell you what these two traits are, let me just say that being attractive is not one of them. Unfortunately, I believe that in today's world, we as a society place much too much attention on how we appear outwardly and far too little focus on how we present ourselves to the world. Have you ever encountered someone who is really attractive yet fails to keep up a relationship? Absolutely. Is there an enormous amount of naturally attractive women on our globe who are still treated like a doormat? You bet. All you have to do is look around. The fact is that guys fall in love with average-looking women every day. It's not about how you appear, but about how you present yourself. Don't get me wrong, looking good is sometimes necessary. But the goal isn't so much to attract guys as it is to compete with other women. Do you see what I mean? To compete with all the other babes out there, to feel better than other women, and there's nothing wrong with it. We all have that within us. However, inspiring a man to fall in love necessitates an entirely different strategy. That's what I want to share with you. When a man falls in love with you, he believes and feels that you are flawless regardless of how you appear. In his emotionally driven mind, your physical beauty makes no difference. It's literally taking over his mind. And guess what? A man in love will always find a way to commit because he is emotionally impelled to do so. Most of the time, guys search for a reason to avoid commitment, but when he's in love, the exact reverse is true. Do men and women fall in love in different ways? Yes and no. Both men and women are capable of falling in love. The distinction between men and women here is the emotional triggers necessary to start the process. There are feminine triggers that attract a man's interest because they indicate value in a woman, and just as there are masculine triggers that attract women's attention. Not to add that everyone is unique, thank God for diversity, which means that everyone has their own preconceived ideas of their ideal mate. This subconscious image of the ideal mate in every one of us has been developing and broadening since childhood. 
Perhaps we developed a crush on a curly head when we were 12 and carried that choice with us throughout our lives. It's there to help us locate a spouse faster. However, keep in mind that this is only a personal taste. It can be overcome by a strong enough sense of emotional attraction and emotional connection. In other words, when a man falls in love, he doesn't care if you are the opposite of his concept of an ideal mate. He'll abandon his preferences since he's found the feeling he was looking for. However, one thing is certain, to effectively drive the process of falling in love, you must be lively, engage in some banter, and symbolically dance in the relationship. It's never a smooth ride, and that's a good thing. So after all of that, what are the two characteristics I've been teasing you about? 1. It is your ability to present yourself as a high-value, high-status woman. I repeat it, once again, your capacity to present yourself as a high-value, high-status woman. Let me clarify. Humans exist in hierarchies. We always have this ladder of hierarchy in our subconscious minds and carry it with us wherever we go. This is not my desire for inequality, but our minds are designed for hierarchy. In other words, we cannot exist without hierarchy. Here's why. The truth is, hierarchy shaped our brains. In order to live cohesively in a social context, our brains created the necessity for hierarchy. It's so that we may collaborate and work together to survive. Back in the tribal days, if you were alone in the forest, you were probably dead, we needed our tribe to live. So our brains are literally designed to always collaborate with others in the hierarchy. In reality, every type of animal that lives in groups has a subconscious desire for hierarchy. Consider a lion pride or a group of monkeys. There is always this hierarchical ladder. We are really the same. Think about it. What do we do when we meet new people? Even when we don't mean to, we immediately figure them out. We do it intuitively because we're attempting to figure out where they sit on our mental hierarchy ladder. In other words, we're determining how valuable high status they are. This is the only thing that matters in dating. When you're dating someone, the only thing that counts is that you showcase and prove your value as a woman. This is crucial for you to grasp if you're dating and want to progress to a long-term committed relationship. The only thing that counts is that you showcase and establish your worth as a woman. Men, of course, do the same to demonstrate their worth as men. Those who show themselves as low value and low status will, in the end, struggle to find a partner, find love, and have the connection they seek. Consider this. That's why celebrities don't appear to have a hard time finding a date. You're probably thinking, but I'm not a celebrity. It makes no difference. You have the potential to be your own celebrity. You may consider yourself a celebrity. That is what is important. It all comes down to how you hold yourself and how you present yourself. After all, status is always a matter of perception. Brad Pitt would have no perceived status among an isolated tribe of Amazonian hunters unless he earned it. And the good news is that you too can be a high value woman. You too may demonstrate your value and prestige regardless of your age, financial circumstances, IQ, or who your friends are if you know how. I'd love to explain how, but that's beyond the scope of this video. But I just wanted to share the idea with you today. So I hope I've instilled in you the importance of being able to present yourself as a high value, high status lady. However, having high status and high worth will only get you halfway there. If you're simply concerned with high status and nothing else, guys will find it tough to connect with you. Trait two, it is your willingness to be open and vulnerable in the face of fear. Here is the second characteristic of women that men adore, and that characteristic is vulnerability. In other words, it is your capacity to profoundly connect with your own emotions that allows a guy to feel you, connect with you, and be inspired to care for you. It's about learning to open up and becoming at ease with that openness. To be in love, you must be completely open to the experience. We can't fall in love with masks or with people's exterior shells. We must go deep. In this day and age, many of us have been trained to suppress our feelings and label them as bad. The more masculine your work or career, the more you're encouraged in this way. Not to mention the message that be a strong woman, take care of yourself, you don't need a man. As much as it is true in some circumstances, it is precisely this that leads some women to reject their own femininity and vulnerability. And if your vulnerability isn't there, what is a man supposed to take care of? What is the emotional cause for him to devote his energy and time to you? How is he ever going to feel like a man? Consider it. If there are no compelling reasons for a guy to stay in a relationship, he is likely to leave. Because of your vulnerability, a guy feels obligated to take care of you and commit himself to you. It's an invitation for men to give their presence. It's a gift for him. It gives him the authority to protect you. It helps him feel alive and gives him a sense of purpose. Men want to commit to you and take care of you because of your capacity to feel and communicate your feelings. But isn't vulnerability a weakness? Unfortunately, most people believe that vulnerability is a sign of weakness. 
Let me assure you there is nothing weak about allowing yourself to feel your feelings. There is nothing weak about being brave enough to admit that you have feelings. Being vulnerable does not imply being needy. They are really different. Neediness is an indication of a low value. I'm sure you're aware of this. Well, that's all about it. Thanks for watching.